hello everybody and uh welcome to sunday streaming uh hope uh y'all having a great sunday as far as uh it is uh anybody celebrating easter happy easter and yeah so uh welcome welcome to another stream um not a whole lot of uh stuff that i did since yesterday but i'll, I'll share a couple of things uh one of them is um we were looking at the kind of the basement area for one of the buildings and uh, some of the things that I mentioned yesterday was around like uh, like a tri-planner um, type of uh, material and I, I looked because I knew about it I just never had one done or never made one yes uh, thank you Atlantica happy Easter and uh, so um, so what I did this morning is uh, I looked into that, and uh, if anybody is interested, I can uh, quickly uh, show the material. It's very simple at this point, very basic. But I'll um, let me share with you uh, how that how that looks. Uh, before I do that, uh, there's just more small changes. Uh, there's been I've kind of played around with um, you know some blockouts and play you know placing some of these buildings around here. So you will see there's like a couple of uh, a couple of more that have been placed like this one the the garages that i was talking about yesterday will kind of work on you know um uh, try and place these a little bit better you know so they they, they look like they belong and um, you know a couple of houses and a garage out here one back here and a couple of them back here so what we'll do is we'll finish the area around it and uh you know spawn some trees Kind of see how everything's looking uh, once it's in place. Of course, you know some of these houses are, you know, not fully ready because uh, you know some, most of them are not going to be enterable, so they're going to have uh, like that uh, door immobilizer, you know, kind of meaning that the bad guys have already taken the people out or uh, something like that, and um, you know, so you you won't be able to see inside. So I need to ad address the materials for the windows, but uh, some will. So um, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so that's kind of like uh, how everything was positioned, and uh, this is how it turned out for the house that we were working on yesterday. So now I only have like uh, one cube here that's got this, uh, I'm not sure if you would call it like a triplanar projection, what the ter technical term for it is, but um, yeah, this uh, this material now is uh, like, it's like this, right? So... You can see like how it all projects on all sides. It uh, for for I think for surfaces just like this, and uh, you know blocking surfaces or um, uh, objects. I think this this works perfectly. And uh, yeah, let me um, let me show you. If anybody's interested, you know you can uh, pause the video. Uh, right now it doesn't have a normal, but um, I'll just show you kind of the basic setup. Like I said, if anybody's interested in it. And um, uh, so, you know, starting with the absolute door position, let me just zoom in a little bit. Uh, hopefully the quality is coming in okay. So, yeah, feel free to, uh, to kind of, you know, pause the video and uh, use this as you see fit. And, um, and then the, uh, the object position absolute actually makes it so that it, uh, it sticks with the object. And uh, so that, that I can rotate the object around, so it's just like I did. And um, then the UV scale is literally what it is. The higher the value, the less the tiling. Um, I kind of had to wrap my head around that, but it's kind of like, I think it's not so much as a UV scale, but it's since this is an absolute world position, is more of like the, the world position than anything. Um, then uh, some, some mask parameters here, so you can get like the... You know the uh, you know top you know sides uh, faces and apply the texture to them. Uh, so I'll continue going on with this, and then uh, you know you got the multiply nodes to multiply between the the texture samples, and then um, this is what actually uh, masks that to a specific face of the object. You know I'm using the vertex normal. Uh, this blend sharpness, what you'll notice, uh, it's I think it's on a on a cube where, where I'm mostly going to use this. It's not so noticeable, but on a surface like this, if I change this to to say zero, 
you'll see like the how how the blend uh, blend occurs because you know it can project from all sides, and uh, you know having this at a higher value makes it stick to you know kind of like the Z or the X or the Y. Um, okay, so uh, there's a couple of nodes in here that even from the tutorial I follow I couldn't really understand. So you know um, I'm not very good at the uh, the technical art part of things. Uh, yeah, so just some of these you can uh, just take them as is, like this, these these break float parameter components. I could not tell you what they do in the grand scheme of this, but um, but in the end, what you end up with, you can uh, uh, you know multiply the texture sample with uh, with the red, the green, and the blue, and then once you add them together, you're gonna get like the top and the sides basically, and then you can put that into base color. And I would assume uh, that works the same for like the roughness um, and normal, whatever other maps you want to put in here. Uh, but yeah, it, it helps a lot. And now I just have basically one mesh for this. And I think it uh, it, it works better that way for me and for these, these, this purpose. Uh, yeah, so that was kind of one of the things that I've done since uh, uh, since yesterday as far as like new stuff. And uh, yeah, let me uh, try and position this as it was to the bottom of this. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see. So I think uh, uh, like what I was uh, what I was gonna do is just uh, continue on with uh, you know these buildings are in place. So continue on with some of the you know terrain sculpting and uh, make the terrain fit where my placement for these buildings will be. All right, so let me exit out of this. I think everything, at least at this point, should be in place. I have used some of these, um, uh, kind of these landings with stairs that I had on the other building. I'm using it uh, here as well. I might need to do a little bit of adjustment for this particular one. I kind of like the way wraps around here and goes down um, because this would be kind of the the, the, the parking entrance uh, so to speak and uh, this little you know back of the building road that I think Imran was you you were with the idea and hello hello I forgot to say hello I think you were with you had the idea to like put something that goes behind these buildings and I do like that so I think right now I have enough spacing space here to connect these is what I'm thinking so yeah, let's um, let's get to work. Uh, okay, well I think um, first I wanted to just uh, um, you know kind of fix the terrain a little bit. There's, there's kind of some potholes in here; <laughs> they look kind of weird. Uh, you can go inside houses. You can start. Yeah, you can. Uh, the only thing is, uh, it's not going to be like this. They want uh, like most of these houses are not going to be enterable. There's only going to be like one or two, and I'm still debating on which one that's going to be uh, that's going to be enterable. But the same, um, like these stairs, they're also back here where this apartment building is, and uh, and this one this one is the one that's going to be enterable. So I think I shown this yesterday with uh, with this interior. There's still, there's still some walls to be placed, but. Um, yeah, so this this interior is the one that's going to be enterable. At least, just this is one of them. But uh, but yeah, just reusing some of the some of the stairs here. Yeah, so um, uh, I'm not going to block the stairs. Uh, a lot of the apartments, like the the, the ones that are not going to be enterable, are going to be uh, they're they're going to have this kind of like door immobilizer type of thing. It's a little, a little bit more like techy type of stuff. And um, uh, that that's why um, the ones that have this are not going to be enterable. And uh, at least that way, you know, it's kind of a little bit easier to tell that uh, you're not going to be able, be able to enter that building as well. And, you know, the bad guys have done this. Oh, yeah, so the house that I was showing first... This one here, yeah, you, you, you'll be able to climb the stairs, but at this point, I am not, 
yeah and i need to we'll probably do that during this uh the stream i need to adjust this mesh so that uh you know you can actually you, you know kind of walk around it but um but yeah this house i, I don't plan of having it enterable like these uh, these kind of uh apartment buildings uh, I, at least at this point i don't have it i don't have a plan to make these enterable yeah so hopefully that gave you uh gave you an answer there's going to be just like some single houses out here that are going to be enterable but not these uh not these bigger buildings So I hope that uh, answers your question. Okay, uh, well let's um, let's do this little connecting road back here, and uh, I'll probably default to using the splines, uh, like the landscape splines. We'll see how that works because uh, I like using that to sculpt the terrain. So let's um, let me adjust this one here a little bit. That's not what I wanted. All right, so this one is like that. This is one of the reasons that I like sculpting the terrain with the splines. Usually works out pretty good. It's a little bit more difficult since I like to have angles <laughs> and uh, like whenever there is like a slope it makes things a little bit more, but a bit more difficult to uh, to put together, so to speak. But um, you know, I think it eventually works out. So you know, once you have it like that, yeah, there's like a little bit of adjustment that needs to be done with sculpting the terrain around here. The joints are. I think they're pretty, sometimes they're difficult to make. All right, so let me adjust this part here. There we go, that's a little bit better. So that road going up the hill. And I, I I don't have any kind of, yeah, roads are tricky, definitely. And I don't have any like urbanistic plan for this. Um, I just want it to be um, like my idea for this, this little uh, area was to, to be on a slope because I like, you know, being at this angle and seeing like these staggered type of positions, you know, like, you know, you can see the house up here. Uh, like these, these are on different levels, so they're not, it's not like completely flat. Um, yeah. Uh, there's no way to generate roads procedurally. I mean, not that I know. Um, I believe there are some, some tools that you can, uh, you can make, you know, put them together, like in, in a way that, uh, you know, kind of just follow splines. But I'm not sure how it's going to work when you want to sculpt the terrain as well. So maybe it, it works if it's all, all everything on a flat surface. But when it when you start adding angles into it and slopes, I think it might be a little bit more difficult. So I'm not really aware of... I've seen some procedurally generated streets, but all of it on just like a flat plane. Uh, because they also rely on, you know, meshes and kind of positioning the meshes. So it's a lot easier when you have like a flat plane in a a set of meshes that are probably always going to be flat, you know, so generating like a flat town. Uh, I'd be interested if, uh, if you know, something like this, you know, with like angles and slopes and all that could be done procedurally, like, you know, 
uh, with, with something else than, you know, terrain spline. But to me, this has been really quick, to be honest, because I, you know, I wanted to sculpt the terrain as well. Uh, so yeah. All right, let's uh, let's join this. I'm gonna start here. Nope, I wanna. It's kind of interested when you when you place the first point of the spline. If there's there's something, I think I might. Ha yeah, I had that selected, so it tries to join them. So I'm gonna try and like make this one kind of end right here. Whoops, that's I don't want to join them right there. So we'll see how this is going to turn out. I'm also curious myself in on because I, I really love the idea and uh, it might also help with uh, with some of this. So let me do this. The ends fall off at zero and then the side fall off to do a point one for all of these points. And let's adjust this one to be right about here. And since this one is, uh, is only going to be um, probably like um, a really faint type of road surface, uh, we'll, we'll, um, I'll probably just leave it as this dirt and just paint around it some grass or something. So let's see, we'll see how this one turns out. Something like that. And this one here, let's try and adjust it to like that. Hey, Cursor is live. Welcome, welcome. Um, uh, well, today I'm just about to. Uh, I'm uh, hoping to uh, to get this um, this little town area closer to finish, and uh, uh, you know, kind of you know, complete the areas around these 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 houses. You know, like we've done yesterday with the with the little uh, rock side rock faces around here. You know, around here, and um, you know, complete some of the, like the, the back sides of the house, you know, with like a parking area and just like trash bins and just how household items like that. Uh, and around uh, dirt or gravel road. Uh, so I'm thinking it's uh, probably going to be some, uh, some decals, you know, with like tire tracks. And uh, other than that, it's just going to be the, this, this surface, you know, this terrain surface. And I think once you paint some grass around it, it might uh, look a little bit more like uh Okay, that's a road, you know, even though it doesn't really have, you know, what you would think of a road texture to it. All right, uh, well, let's see. I'm going to select these and try and make it a little thinner, maybe 300. Let's see how this one turns out. Ooh, actually not bad at all. Let's bring this out. I'm gonna try and uh, make this a little higher, and do one more point. There we go. And this one. Try and place it right there, like that. Let's try and make this a little wider, and even this one maybe. Okay, I, I can dig that. Uh, maybe it's, I kind of pushed it a little too low. Let's see. Yeah, so that's the, this is the thing where uh, I'm not sure how easily this could be done procedurally, right? 
maybe there is some tool out there that can. I'm just, I just don't know about it. <laughs> I wish I did, if there was such a thing. All right, well, I think that makes uh, a road-like uh, kind of surface, so to speak. Yeah, there we go. So here, let's try and edit this level. And I'm, I'm going to try and place the cars and vehicles kind of just a, a, along the road. And I need to see about these fences. Maybe just delete this one. And uh, Atlantica, thanks again for the suggestion. I up I updated my drivers, and I haven't had that direct three D crash today. Like for the few hours I've been using uh, Unreal, we'll see. I mean, we'll see if it happens uh, in between uh, now and uh, the end of the stream. But uh, I we'll see. <laughs> I'm I'm curious myself. Yeah, exact. <coughs> Excuse me. Exactly, Imran. So that's um, that's that's my thought. It's um, you know it's going to have some some grass on the sides, and uh, I think that's going to be that's going to be okay. So let me do this here. And uh, let's just try and move this off a little bit. And then this one. Why is that particular piece of fence? Oh, is it on the couch, maybe? There we go. And these cars will probably be best if they're like around here, at least for now. All right. Now let's try and uh, you know place some of these cars on this little slope here. That's not what I wanted. And this is always like the fun part about, uh, you know, the game development with, uh, you know, doing doing some of this, uh, uh, some of this positioning. Like, I like, I definitely like streaming doing this. In, <laughs> uh, I mean, the blueprints are fun because you get some functionality at the end, but it's a lot of just uh, kind of, sometimes fiddling about with trying to find how to do some certain things and sometimes it, it, it may not work and um, I think that's one of the reasons sometimes I'm like eh, you know I kind of like doing this a little bit better because um, it's um, there's some some results happening right I'm wondering what about this one is is it the pixel depth offset that it, this one is? Uh, whenever I move this around, it kind of turns black like that. Yeah, and it, it is. It is. That's that's the definitely a lot of fun. And one of the issues that I've run into with uh, with blueprints, and this is in uh, in five uh, Unreal Engine five, is that trying to debug something that is a child class of 
of um, a pawn, it's uh, it's um, it's always tricky. I mean, it it freezes the engine for I'm not sure what reason, but in my case, uh, all the other blueprints I can debug just really easy. But when it comes to one of my characters' classes, that you know they're all child children, you know grandchildren of this this uh, this parent class, you know slash grandparent class. It, it always freezes. I'm not entirely sure why. So I've never been able to to figure out why that is. All right. So this is something cool. Uh, I've been using this uh, IA scatter tool to create uh, to spawn a bunch of these decals and create like road out of decals. Might not be the best way to do it, but um, I can figure out a better way to do it instead of just, uh, I mean, I guess the, the other way would be to um, to use like um, the a road, road spline. And I just don't have a particular really good material for it just yet. So, you know, using these decals, at least for now, was okay-ish. To, to prototype things out. So, you know, it kind of turns out into like a dirt track like this um, for that uh, for that road. I mean, the one thing, <laughs> the one thing that I'm not really happy with, uh, I am really torn, I have to say. It's uh um it's this or let's try since we're here. I'll commit this change. Maybe this could be good for like uh really just somewhere where the car parks or something like that. But uh, let's try using the dirt road that I have used previously with the, those dirt materials. So let me grab that first. So it's, it's kind of similar to what, what is this one over here. So I'm going to try and place it onto this one here. Hey, Severin. Welcome, welcome. It's going pretty good. Glad to have you. Welcome to the stream. All right, so let me apply that here. And while that one's not going to be a paved road, I just need to grab the materials for this guy, this muddy ground road. And let's see. Hey, Hisham, welcome, welcome. And for this one, just do the same segments. And two materials to override. One of them is going to be that, and the other one is going to be this. Let me delete this decal. And then this one. Yeah, see, this is what I was telling. It's kind of like the the decal is like a section that it's it has to overlap with another one to to actually make it feel like it's a road. So that's why there's like just a little bit too many of them that are needed, and I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that. You know, that many decals in one place. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm just going to delete this one. So yeah, it's it's a kind of a tough choice for that. I know that decals are only you know I usually just set them to to be rendered at a pretty close distance. I mean, you know, close distance. You know, so they're not going to be rendered from uh, way too far. But um, It's just something that I'm kind of thinking about. All 
Uh, Hisham, yes. Um, they um, and you're right. That definitely looks like a just a fresh tire type of tracks, and uh, that's why I'm kind of more inclined to to not use them. You know, and they, you know, when they overlap, they don't look so good. Uh, I mean, I could, and I actually should have been just editing this one. Uh, I could attempt to uh, to have them, you know, be more faded, but uh, at the same time, it's um, yeah, I think I'm just going to remove these because there's already like the road itself has a pretty decent, uh, uh, decent surface for that. You know, like um, the the material itself, you know, looks like there's like a road there. So I think that that should work pretty good. It, I think it blends in decently with the rest of uh, with the rest of the, the landscape. The, the only one, the one thing here is that I just need to uh, try and sunk this in to the ground a little bit, um, like here, you know. Maybe something like that. And I did, um, thank you, thank you, I'm glad you like it. Uh, I did up to, up, update the drivers. I haven't had any crashes, you know, knock on wood. Uh, this morning, so we'll uh, we'll see what uh, we'll see what's gonna happen. I guess. All right, come on. I just wanted to say I want to have a an end fall off. Work with me here. Let's do a thousand, maybe. There we go. Okay. So it kind of blends in, it kind of ends right there. Um, and this last piece can be done with one of those decals that I've uh, just shown. Hey, Laporta, hello. Tell me please, how to make a uh, landscape from a height map. That's actually not that, uh, not too difficult. Uh, if you have the height map and uh, you create a new landscape here, you know, so let me save this real quick. And I think I can show you. I don't think I, I necessarily need to, uh, to add a landscape. But yeah, let me uh, save this. And hopefully, it's taking a little bit longer than I, than I, than I like saving this asset. Um, so yeah, once you create a new landscape here, you are able to um, to to before you create it to import a la uh, to import a height map. Yeah, so let me. Uh, oh man, why did it? Why is it stopping into in this particular one? And it's not using like a ton of memory. Oh yeah, no problem, Lepora. Um Yeah, so the, these are like the freezes that I never, never was, never un able to understand with Unreal. You know, like there's a very light usage, but is it doing anything? I have no idea. I mean, seems like it is. Um, let's see, performance. I mean, nothing is. I mean, the GPU seems to be somewhat maxed out but then again i got a old timer of a gpu but um other than that this should not be gpu bound which is really odd why this i've i've seen this i think i've seen this happen once or twice where when you're saving it just freezes like this so it's that's unreal <laughs> literally <laughs> hey isham starting my dream dream game but i don't think i'm ready um, well, you know, I think, you know, as, as a, I'm probably biased, but I think, um, uh, you, you are, you will never be ready. <laughs> and that's how I felt, you know, when I first started. And this is kind of like really annoying right now where it's like stuck into that, this one little 
you know, level actor, because it's li literally one level actor right now that is saving. I'm not entirely sure what, what it is, but um, I would just, I would just say go for it, you know. And like I said, start with, uh, with the mechanics and see, see how easy they are to implement. And you know, it's it's kind of like a house, you know, you just it's brick by brick. Hey, Alex Mew. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, da, Sarum. Um, yeah. Thank you for uh, thank you for stopping by. Yeah, exactly, and and, and that's how I, I I learned a lot by that, you know. And I have had moments where I um, I might have gone too far ahead of myself, and I had to step back, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going the wrong kind of the wrong rabbit hole. So maybe maybe let's pull back and uh, you know kind of slow down for a little bit. And it looks like I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh, shut it down because this is uh, this is kind of stupid. I'm not entirely sure why this is uh, uh, this is this crashed like that. <laughs> I've been doing mistakes for three years, and that's how I uh, uh, I've been doing mistakes for eight. Uh, you know, uh, or how long have been. Uh, you know, five, six years now with Unreal. So I've been doing mistakes for that long, and you know, no worries. It's uh, it's it's a, it's the it's a learning process, I think. And I, one of the uh, I think one of the the trouble not troubles, but one of the issues with game development is like many people do it diff many different ways. So you can learn from from you know one person. On doing it one way, and then somebody else comes along and say, "Well, I'm actually doing it this way," and then it throws you off, um, and uh, it's 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 really difficult uh, to to kind of realize, "Well, okay, this was a mistake, or was that one a mistake?" <laughs> you know, hopefully that makes sense. But that's how I see it sometimes. Alex, uh, oh, thank you, thank you for the kind words. Yeah, um, and appreciate. Uh, I created a similar survival game, which is on Steam for two years now. Oh, oh, that's awesome! Hey, uh, if you don't mind, please share it. Uh, and if you're on like Discord, please, uh, please share it there as well. And oh yeah, and and since I just loaded into my test level here, you'll notice this guy is uh, freshly dressed. So I've been kind of processing some of the some more outfits for these for these uh, NPCs. So yeah, you'll be seeing probably the the full suite of outfits next week, or at least a good chunk of it. Oh, Farlands. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I'll check it out. So, um, if uh, if you don't mind, you know, go ahead and join. Uh, Join my Discord, or at least send me a send me a friend request, and I'd I'd love to uh, to hear more of your experience on that. Oh yeah, thanks, thank you, Severin. That's that's uh, I feel exactly the same, you know. And uh, the 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 big biggest thing about it is, and I think with like any anything worth doing, we were talking about this yesterday. Anything worth doing is hard. But um, um, just don't get discouraged because, yeah, mistakes will be made no matter what you do. And uh, as long as you keep keep on going, right? That's that's how I that's how I feel about it. You know, I've made some mistakes in the past with this that I've always thought of, you know, I'm about to give up. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, it's uh i think it doesn't it doesn't help you in 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 the long run or the short run and also like the kind of the game development journey that i think we're all on <laughs> uh hey gitish yeah yeah it's a motivating I, I should rename the stream you know to like uh on your own motivating talk i think everybody here is uh, is trying to do that for like you know uh, people doing it. Okay, well, um, 
Imran, thank you so much for the suggestion. I really like the having the road here. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, that is definitely uh, looking looking much better with the road. It kind of breaks up the surface, so that was great thought. And you know, welcome again to my reasoning for uh, for streaming is like I get ideas from you guys, so I appreciate that. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. I mean, uh, and I think I I get. Um, you know, you know, motivation from from you guys as well. You know, kind of just you know being here and just chatting, even people just asking questions. But I forgot. Uh, I I didn't want I didn't want to forget about Lipora. So Lipora, uh, if you're still here, um, and we're back into the engine. Uh, basically, what you do, you go into landscape mode and you manage. You 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 say new. So when you have new, there's like somewhere. Oh, there you go. So you get a, a new landscape created. Now, um, I can tell you too much about how you want to do like the section sizes, like the resolution. But if I recall correctly, you can import from file, you can import the height map. And, um, and that's how you would get like a, a, a height map that you want to that you want to have. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully that uh, that helps. All right, so back here. Um, what's this guy doing here? Let's adjust this a little bit. Like that. All right, that's pretty good, at least for that section there. Let's just place a couple more. I guess we'll move some of these doors around, like this trash bin. Oops, I forgot to scroll down in the messages. <laughs> um, I have to use flat dance for my game. Yeah, well, I know, I know that's 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 definitely. Um, um, you know, for the size, the scale of your project, Alanika, uh, it'd be it'd be interesting if you could get something like slopey like this. You know, when you place houses and all, I just I just like the way um, kind of the mountainous towns are. You know, like mountainous. You know, but like the hilly towns. You know, like with houses on on different elevations. I do like that uh, uh, that stuff in in video games. And thank you, thank you so much, uh, Alex Mew. Uh, on Discord, uh, it's um, never follow eighty one. So let me, I'll put it in chat uh, just for my. And if you if you go into the under the more, I believe under the stream under this stream, you'll see there's a link. There should be a link to the Discord channel. Oh, nice, Gitish. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep us surprised on uh, how your Godot experience is going. <laughs> that's what I like about your game. That's what we see in Far Cry Five. Yeah, that's that's what I liked about Far Cry Five. I like the the elevation, you know, kind of, and they don't have a, well, I would call it like an agglomeration of houses, like I have here at least. Not that I could see one. I think I've seen more like this in Days Gone. Like they have like a little bit of an urban area. It seems like Far Cry 5 was more around like there's like this one farm here or you know this one factory here or these kind of three or four houses here. That's kind of how it seemed like it was set up. Uh but that's not to say that it wasn't it wasn't great. <laughs> I I really enjoyed it. But yeah, um all right, well, I think I'm going to place a couple of cars next to this house. So let me, I'm just going to use this one for now, and I'll try and find one that's, uh, you know, not exactly like this one. But for now, I just wanted to to place them around here. Oops. 
Uh, I think uh, Cursor is live. Uh, when it comes to the environment, yes, I would uh, I would say so. It's um, you know Far Cry Five and and um, Days Gone. But the interesting thing about it is that I've uh, I've actually had a bunch of these already kind of drawn out before I played Far Cry Five and Days Gone, and I'm like, oh my god, my kind of my world looks almost like this one. It's the same kind of idea. But um, you know, vegetation wise as well, because I I like these trees. You know, I like the the pine type of trees. I'm not sure why, but uh, I mean, where I live, there's also like a lot of pines. I um, I do like the pine trees for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but it's just uh, <laughs> it's like that. All right, so I'm just gonna jump out of this and then do a little bit more of the terrain sculpting around this house here. It's a little bit too much. Um, let's see. So you have any plans when demo or something similar? Yeah, I do have plans for a demo. So I hope a quick demo to be available within the, I, I keep on saying, you know, the next couple of months or so, but, you know, things get thrown my way. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's really difficult sometimes to to say like a like an actual you know timeline that's sometimes that's kind of like the the one thing that really bugs me that i can't say you know it's going to be then you know kind of thing but um but yeah that's that's what i'm currently working on uh, as as hard as i can towards uh towards having a demo and uh um you know, get to to get that out as soon as possible, and uh, like I said, the demo is going to be focused uh, mostly around uh, around this area here. That's why I'm, my focus is mostly on this one to have this uh, to have this done, and uh, you know, kind of the um, um, the rest of the areas might not be available. Um, they might be blocked, but uh, but yeah, they. Uh, they're gonna be uh, this. This area is like a, like you've probably seen in my latest streams is what I'm being mostly focused on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so is there gonna to be that creepy cabin in the middle of the woods with Easter eggs or something on it? Uh, no, nothing uh, creepy. At least not at this point. I'm just joking. No, there's um, there is kind of like a a dark factor to the game itself, but um, nothing creepy like uh you know there is no monsters or like zombies or anything like that um so uh Lepora, unfortunately i have not used fluid ninja uh I, I can't tell you how to do that sorry i do not have kids yeah uh i uh i have i kind of live vicariously through my friends or my most of my friends have kids so it's um I, I sometimes do like the fun uncle type of role. <laughs> I, at least that's what I've been called to some extent. So yeah. Um, but no, I do not. Uh, I do not have kids. I never really thought of it, anyways. Uh, it's it's definitely fun. I mean, but um, I mean, thinking of uh, of doing this and. I'm not sure how possible it would it be it'd be really hard to do you know um if uh, if kids are uh, are you know kind of in the mix but um yeah but I've seen people that um I've seen people that well, 
the reason I'm saying that is because my day job is not game development, so that's why I think it's uh, it's a little bit trickier when it comes to uh, doing this as a hobby outside of work and it consuming so much time. Um, you know, once you have kids, it's um, I think it's a hobby that can be shared with kids. I'm not entirely sure if any of you have kids and uh, and they play this. But all my friends' kids, they play mostly like the uh, the the sports games, you know, like FIFA and uh, or the Call of Duty type games. So none of them play like single player games and uh, uh, like you know story based single player games, like the types of games that I play. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely, uh, Severin. As far as the demo, I I hope um, by the beginning of summer. So that's what I'm saying within the next few months. That that's my hope. So yeah, I would definitely before the end of the year. I mean, before the end of the year would be kind of a, a longer, a longer demo, but I like to get like a, a short thing out, uh, and uh, at least p for people to test it out, you know, kind of uh, performance-wise and uh, you know, interaction-wise, you know, basic functionality type of stuff. <laughs> Why do you have to do the same two same cars? I uh, I have a, a a few other cars. I just placed them there. You know, I'm gonna replace them with with something else, but I just placed them there to uh, to kind of uh, semi block out. I'm having a, a hard time sometimes, like doing the block out before, um, like um, using like blocks, like literally blocks. So to me, it's a lot easier to actually use the objects. Uh, to I visualize them a lot easier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, neighbors' cars. <laughs> They they wanna they wanna uh, they wanna do a drag race. Adansky, will we get a demo before Grand Theft Auto 6 is released? Well, I mean, I think at this rate, from at least from what I'm hearing, news from like Grand Theft Auto 6 is that pushed into next year. So I uh, I'm definitely working towards uh, doing doing it before that. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking. Thanks so much for joining. Yeah, so so that's why there's like two of the same cars, but. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's change them up. Let's use uh, I use something a little bit different. Not that that one is a little too much different, but uh, it's uh, it's something that's not uh, not here, you know. So it's also a matter of um, what cars are available on various packages. So this is this is kind of what I have. You know, I have to work with what I have as well. All right, so I think the area around this house is almost done. I just need to sculpt the back side of it there. And uh, and then we can uh, play around a little bit with, you know, just placing some, like, lawn chairs and something out back. Uh, I'm just confused thinking I would never be able to make games like what, uh, you know, it's... That's one of the things that I've never really um, felt bad about, you know, like, okay, this kind of looks like Far Cry 5, but it's at the end of the day, it's not, you know, like Days Gone kind of looks like Far Cry 5, if you think about it, if you look at the environment and all that. But then again, once you play it, it's completely different, you know, there's like the zombies, you know, the motorcycle mechanics, all that kind of stuff. So um, I just think about making, you know, my game and uh it, it, it's it's that's the that's the tough part about it you know it's um there's so many games out there you know they and they all look awesome you know by you know small teams big teams you know what have you but um i think at the end of the day it's um you do you so to speak and um you know you, you know make the make i'm making the game that i want to make that i want to play so I'm, my hope is that others would feel the same way and, and play it. And um, I think it, people should, that's uh, that's how I see, you know, game development or, you know, anything that you would do. Um,
Yeah, there you go, Atlantica, exactly. And Adamski, exactly, you can't, like, I, um, I'm not sure what game I played once. I think it might have been, I was in, like, the Crisis age, where I was, like, playing Crisis. And um, so I was playing Crisis, and I kind of took the time with the end of the, at the end of the game to count, like, the everybody that went into making crisis and crisis is not a big game it's not anything compared to like far cry 5 you know but even in crisis once i was done with the list i think i stopped counting at about like 800 names so i can only imagine what what goes into like grand theft auto 6 you know <laughs> or any other grand theft auto well you know nowadays there uh it's probably more and more but um yeah, I can only imagine how many people are in, involved in the making of, of such a such a game, you know. So, and that's why you know I don't feel bad, you know. I'm kind of okay. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my own thing, and uh, you know, hope that you know people play it, people enjoy it, and that's that's good enough for me. Because in the end, yeah, it's a hobby that we hope it would turn into, you know, something of that we can pay our bills <laughs> and maybe even more. Um, yeah, Severin, that's that's totally true. And uh, Cursor, I, I, I feel you. I feel the same way. Hey, Rimzi, Rimzi Abdullah. Hello, hello, welcome. Uh, yeah, I feel the same way. There is definitely, um, you know, the, the one thing that I like about game development is that it, it is, um, there's so many types of games out there that um, I, I don't think there is, it like the, the the space will ever get filled. You know, there's always like, room for more games of more types and that's that's how i feel about game development oh yeah just adding the grasses around here uh has i think has helped quite a bit could be like the parking spots <laughs> uh Unity Unreal, it brings new features very late, like motion matching. I don't remember any game having it. Oh, yeah. Well, and here's the thing. Um, at least the way I feel about some of these, uh, you know, some of these, like, flashy features, interesting. I, I know they're, they're, like, they sound awesome and everything like that, but um, I actually haven't seen any of that in any of the, you know, these you know, new video games out there. It's it's a nice thing to have, um, but I honestly can't say what game I've seen something like that being done in. Maybe, um, yeah, I can't tell. And Imram, that's exactly true. Uh, the, the scale of Grand Theft Auto is gigantic, or Far Cry. Like, just I just played Far Cry 6, and I think Far Cry 6 is even bigger than Far Cry 5 when it comes to the map. I mean, that thing felt really huge. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really measure it uh, fully, but um, yeah, it's it feels gigantic. Um, but there is also so much planning that goes into like that scale of a game, you know. Um, and I think they uh, they run on some pretty tight margins. So I might be wrong, but sometimes that's that's how that's how it feels like. Um, let's see. 
That's why I think you can never make. Yeah, it, it was definitely difficult, but I, I wouldn't discount them. You know, I wouldn't discount them. Uh, could you show the blueprint graph of your dirt material? Uh, Adamski, are you referring to uh, the landscape or the um, um, kind of the road material? Let me know. Oh, the road. Yeah, so um, let me show it to you. It's actually really simple. Well, I mean, hopefully at this point, it's not going to be uh, too, too confusing. <laughs> oh, shoot. How did I? Oh, yeah, that's whenever you go into new. Uh, let me see. I actually wanted to go under splines and select uh, select these guys here. All right. So this row in particular has two two materials. One of them, it's got this kind of like the dirt this dirt layer, and um, it actually has. Uh, I guess it's a little bit complicated. So. Avert your eyes of the following spaghetti. I guess it's not extremely spaghetti-ish. But uh, it's basically like a masked surface. Uh, so you can see uh, here, you know, there's like an opacity mask with uh, some dithering happening just to help with, uh, with, with that opacity blending. And uh, I also I'm also using some pixel depth offset with the the third temporal uh, AA. I think it's anti-aliasing. But um, yeah, so let's this part here. I'm just gonna leave that because it's related to the runtime virtual textures. If I choose to use such a thing, but uh, everything else is uh, is pretty basic. Uh, let me know if you want to see like a specific section of this. Um, it's like I said, um, nothing too crazy, uh, but um, yeah. So this is kind of how the te the UV mapping works. The, the the how I'm doing UV mapping. You know, like there's an offset, um, and um, you know the tiling, and then the rotation. Then all of these go into the base color, uh, emissive roughness, normal. And off of these, um, I have, you know, some adjustments, you know, for like uh, darkness, uh, desaturation, maybe a tint. Uh, it probably could be optimized some more. Uh, the one thing that I was doing with this one is I have a, two opacities. So if I want to add an additional la layer of opacity, I uh, so you know basically like the road has its own opacity along the lines or around along the edges. But if I want to add like potholes or like holes in the middle, I have the second opacity, and what they do is uh, this subtracts from this one, and like you can see, I have like some uh, um, opacity channel because sometimes opacities can be on different channels if it's like a a single texture. And uh, yeah, so they all go into a switch to determine, well, does it have a second alpha? Do I need to like uh, look at that? And um, you know, they each one has its own opacity multiplier, so that way you can uh, you can adjust to that. And all the way at the end, there's the the kind of the dithering. And um, yeah, there's the the, um, the the pixel depth offset to help with the with the blending of on the edges. And you know, if you if I want to go fully crazy, is then there's the the runtime virtual textures. So kind of a it's a pretty complex material, uh, but hopefully that gave you a little bit of an idea of this this master material that I made. And after that, you know, like the normal, it's basically just a regular normal, and then uh, I have like a, a detail normal. I guess this part here is. Don't worry about that. It's just not uh, it's not used. Or oh, actually, it is. It's the dirt. But um, there's also like the regular normal for the surface, and then uh, 
pretty much with a similar setup for the UVs. I have a detail normal if I so choose to, to add it to that. So yeah, um, hopefully that helped a little bit. Um, I think I've shown everything for this. Uh, this part up here, this is, oh, this is the dirt. So if you want to add like a, a dirt uh, surface on top of on top of your on top of that material this is uh, this is what it is similar setup for the uh, for the UVs and then uh, again just uh, multiplying it doing some tinting having a little bit of an opacity and uh, uh, and then in this case I'm using the alpha out of the dirt albedo to be kind of the mask for the dirt that I'm applying. So, oh, well, there, there you have it. That was it in a in a nutshell, so to speak. I guess I could have applied it, but uh, I'm not going to do that just now. All right. Well, uh, I think this is actually starting to turn out okay. You know, with the with the backside of the houses, it it makes so much of a difference once you add some some vegetation and some. Uh, uh, in, into it, you know, kind of just filling out this this barren terrain. All right, so let's do the this this back side of the house here, uh, or front side. I'm not entirely sure because this is the road. So let's try and get that up to about there. There we go. Let's paint a little bit more grass. Yeah, I do like that. And maybe I can like throw a little bit of mulch in there. So just to have a little bit of a kind of a fern here and there. There we go. That adds a little bit of variety in there. All right, so we got these houses almost in place. Let's uh, move on to, to these ones down here. And so for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to start alongside of this and uh, do some grass at the bottom of these cliffs or, you know, rock faces. And let's also kind of, I'm going to f add some uh, some little details, like some uh, kind of scattered uh, rock meshes, just to fill in that uh, kind of this, this bottom of, of it. Oh, and look, there's some trash bags that have started growing out of the rock. <laughs> Cars be flying. Oh, you never seen that. Yeah, okay, well. <laughs> oh, I have some news for you. Uh, just joking. Uh no cars flying here. Yeah, I think I have maybe like 10 different cars. And, uh, you know, so with, you know, um, just varying colors to to add, you know, kind of just a variety. It's not going to be, it's not going to be too, too much. You, 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 I mean, people that are going to be really attentive, They'd be able to tell that oh that car I've seen it down that road too is that the same car, and uh, uh, yeah. And uh, Cursoris, I um, I actually have a gravity tool. Uh, I actually have one that's uh... <laughs> so uh, Bukur Mihai is saying uh, just just block the road so it doesn't roll down a hill. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> And um, so what I was uh, gonna say is, I do have a tool that you can you can place, uh, you know, just physically, um, you know, using physics, you can place different assets around the map. But um, um, for some of them, especially when it comes to like these assets, uh, I kind of like having them on a spline, right? So so these are not placed with, um, um, how should I say it, with uh, with you know, uh, they're they're placed with a trace. So, like uh, like you can see here, 
uh, this spline does a trace, uh, you know, going down, and uh, that's how uh, that's how these are placed. So I'm kind of just trying to place them along, say, like the corner of the house, and uh, this one can also have like a little bit of a dumpster down here. And uh, and there is, uh, it, it's home. Uh, it's uh, it's actually end. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing is, I'm not entirely sure. Like for example, let's do it for this one. Yeah. See, it's I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I I just pressed end right there. If it's where does it uh, where is it going for? There you go. Okay. So end yeah end end works. But for example, it didn't work for this one. So I'm not entirely sure why. For this one, and didn't didn't work. Um, but yeah, there we go. And uh, okay, so what I was um, uh, saying, I have made some uh, out of uh, out of a mesh from uh, from Megascans. I have created some uh, some meshes to kind of place around like kind of the fall off rocks i think you could tell you could call them you know that would look like this so i want to add a few of these around here and this is one of the meshes that has you know uh runtime virtual textures the stuff that i just mentioned earlier so you can see it kind of blends with the terrain almost uh almost seamlessly uh, yeah, Bukur, uh, Atlantica, uh, Mihai, uh, sorry, Mihai, <laughs> uh, Atlantica, I think that's what it is. It might be the, the collisions, but I believe, if, I, uh, if I'm if i not mistaken, I think this one had collisions. Uh, let me see. I think it had player collision enabled. Yeah, so there is, co like, player collisions, but I'm not entirely sure if it's how the collision is made. Uh, it's it's a it's an interesting one. I've noticed it for for some models, but not for others. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, and this is uh, exactly this is what I was what I wanted to use just to help a little bit with the blending from that you know kind of vertical surface down to to this the, to the ground surface. You know, something like this. And uh, and yeah, the um, the the runtime virtual textures are pretty cool when it comes to to blending some of these assets, but you know again it's one of those use in moderation type of stuff type of things, you know. So there you go, like that. Um, uh, Cursor is live. Pick me, pick one, AMD or Intel. Uh, I've actually used both. I've um, I usually go with uh, the combo that I find cheaper. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but uh, uh, the latest the 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 last when I bought this old PC that I currently that I just upgraded, it was like the cheapest one that I could find on on the marketplace on the Facebook marketplace, and it had an Intel. So I just I just went with that. Oh, AMD CPU or NVIDIA GPU and NVIDIA GPU. Yeah. So for me is um, uh, is an, uh, Intel and, uh, and NVIDIA. Okay, there we go. That looks kind of good. I'm, I'm a, I like that. It's always a hard time kind of finding finding a way to uh, to make these uh, not have like gaps they can see behind them. Oh yeah, yeah, and and that's true. Um, because uh, you know my friend uh has um. An uh, an Nvidia with an Intel no uh, with an AMD video card so uh, totally mm 
there we go and just closing off that little mesh there that adds a little bit more of, uh, of a variety in that one one more here Yeah, we're going. I think that should be should be okay-ish. There. So, for example, this one this one doesn't have that pixel depth offset, and even I'm uh, sorry, uh, the runtime virtual textures, and even on this one, I'm not. I think it's I think it's a little bit better because it's like a really flat area, not too much grass there. So I think I'll I'll leave it like that. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's do a little bit more painting. <laughs> Intel became a grandpa now. Uh, yes, they, they are, I think, in that status, I have to say. But not to discount them. Uh, I mean, they, uh, they're they still really big, so they could, you know, pull or, um, you know, we'll hear it in the news, Intel buys AMD or some other stuff like that. Uh, so Hisham, I believe there, yeah, there is, I have um, in my uh, game settings, there is a way to reduce the text resolution. So I can show you if you'd like. I can jump into game mode and, and show you how that works. Like the uh, how the kind of adjusting the performance settings work for the game. go Not sure why I didn't display a little bit more instances oh yeah let's do it let's do it um, okay exit out of this actually let me let me save because I uh, the good thing the good thing is that uh, no direct 3D crash today. So, uh, Lanika Imran, uh, I'm guessing uh, upgrading, I mean, um, updating the the graphics card might have helped because it seemed, like I said, it seemed like to start with these crashes after it, um, after I upgraded to 5.3. So maybe, hey, guess knees. Uh Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. All right, so here we go. Uh, we are in here. I'll just close a couple of these windows, a couple of these tabs around here. All right, so um, yeah, you know, a little bit worse uh, frame rate going this way due to some of those areas back there unoptimized. All right, so in here, uh, let me actually see if I can go to full screen. So on the settings, you know, under advanced, you'd be able to change all these things to like, you know, you know, epic cinematic view distance, like low, you know, resolution. Actually, it seems like this resolution is uh, is a huge driving factor for performance, and I was never able to um, to figure out um, what this is actually. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's see. This one is. Um, I mean, you can already tell that it's. Uh, I think it's already performing better. At least it felt that way, but it doesn't really translate into it. Um, so let's do a few other things. You know, like lighting. Let's do lighting low. Actually, let's do medium for lighting. Textures low. Post process medium foliage medium I mean you already see like some things changing behind in the in the blur uh, 
yeah, uh, Alex, resolution is our screen percentage, but I never really understood how that plays into it. Like what's, cause I, I never see a lot of like a big change between like, um, between a resolution of 60 versus a resolution of a hundred, but I do see a big improvement, improvement in performance. Um, so yeah. Okay. So we got some, uh, some of these a little further down. Let's do like the anti-aliasing low. And I can actually also turn on, turn off global illumination. I think things are going to look pretty poorly now. <laughs> yeah, so things look pretty poorly at this point. But um, let's see if uh, if we're doing any better. Yeah, we're we're getting a an extra 12, 13 frames per second uh, as far as that goes. But let's uh, yeah, the, the, let me let me do the lighting a little bit better. So. Um, Video. Oh, actually, it's under advanced. Let's do lighting high, at least to get some of the um, some of the stuff, some of the the shadows in there. Yeah, the textures are definitely not as good as as they were. You can kind of see them once you're up close. Um, though I'm not sure if there was that big of an impact. I thought I put them on uh, textures low. I'll, I'll I'll need to take a look at this and see exactly if that uh if that actually does what I think it does. Let's do the foliage to low. Okay, so low foliage apparently removes everything that is terrain based uh, or uh, grass layers. Sorry, so grass layers. And I'm guessing that could be kept at medium. And post-process medium, lighting, effects. Let's do effects medium as well. Um, view distance. Uh, it looks like the view distance is, hasn't, hasn't done you know, too much of a change. Um, so... Oh man, that was, I'm not entirely sure how much health I wasted by that fall. Uh, oh wait, so I missed a couple of uh, messages. Alex, uh, 5.4 has nano tessellation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'm, I'm gonna steer clear of nanite for now. I, I just don't have any assets that really need nanite. And uh, Atlantica, did you create that blur in and out? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I, uh, it's, um, I think it's actually a material applied to uh, to the widget. I, I have to look because it's been a while. Do you plan on adding DLSS? Uh, 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 not at the moment. I think it's just uh, we were talking about you know like uh, team sizings, uh, you know sizes and all that. So I think I might just not not. Uh, look into it at least at first um, I'm guessing if there'd be like a really high oh wow that actually works out pretty good <laughs> uh, with the current yeah with those uh, with those performance settings it actually runs pretty 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 okay I could even like bump them out a little bit and and you know it's still pretty poorly optimized with a lot of the stuff that that is currently rendered that shouldn't be you know like interiors for the houses and whatnot I just wanted to get to this. Oh, look, look, I'm not sure if you can tell. Like these guys right here, they're like the enemy NPCs. So those are, uh, they also have some optimization as far as how far they get rendered. I just wanted to uh, um, to grab the weapon. Oh, shoot, 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 he see me? I think he saw me. Okay, yeah, he chilled. I just wanted to grab one of the one of the weapons and uh, go about taking them down for a little bit. Oh, and I forgot. I forgot to move out the uh, forgot to move out the uh, the procedural foliage volume that uh, is 
is creating an overlap that generates overlaps so unfortunately unless it's built uh, it's not working out so well and yeah I still I also have some some errors here that are related to to the car I believe anywho uh, Hisham uh, mesh streaming and so uh, I, I think uh, what I might be um, Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> Just like Far Cry Five. Well, you know, I was initially what I was thinking of doing is have it on, you know, like a vo vocal type of uh, type of notification. You know, like, and it it works. You know, uh, it's like, hey, who's there? Like, okay, I'm going to check. Hey, stop. But if it's too far away, you're not going to be able to hear hear them, right? Or like, because if that sound is spawned, if it's got like uh like attenuation you're not going to be able to hear them so that's why um i had it with some kind of a um like one of those little cursors and that's how it's done apparently i've seen it in, in most other games unfortunately i, I wish there was a, a, a different way but if there's like multiple multiple enemies you kind of have to have that uh, detection somewhere around like the center and um uh, and yeah I, i'm definitely amazed by far cry 5 that's um i i like that's the the mechanics of a shooter that i that i like you know those mechanics are like something that i've been inspired by quite a bit um and hisham i believe mesh streaming is uh with word partition is not so much mesh streaming but it's like a, a grid setup so each one of the levels would have and I can show you. And basically, I think that's what uh, what uh, accounts for mesh streaming. So, for example, this level here would have a grid of large assets. So, depending on how the runtime grid is set up, uh, is going to be like that. And Atlantica, uh, are you going to have the binoculars where you can tag enemies? Uh, no, I don't. I don't plan on on having that. It's just. Um, a little bit too much extra work that uh, I don't. I don't think I, I have I have the, the time to do it. And uh, cursor, uh, why don't you have a mini map? You know that's um, the the main reason for that is like the placement of the and I, I think I've shown this is where you place where I'm where I, where I plan to place the little um, um, what do you call it uh, that little tablet you know so kind of placing it like i said you know like you you would you would lower you would lower in it into view like you would lower your microphone on your headset or something like that and um so that's where the mini map would have gone and that's why i didn't really want to have a, a mini map i just wanted to keep it keep the ui as as clean as as i could uh and also the um, you know this this thing with like the the little tablet you know kind of dropping down in front of like to the left of the screen if you want it and you can pull it back up if you don't it it would be kind of uh in, in place of that so that's going to be a matter of um um a matter of what do you call it uh, hopefully people will, will like it we'll, we'll see how it goes and um um if if people would prefer i might just also give the option of having like a the, the basic ui like you would see and in, in most shooter games you know you have the objective on like you know top left bottom left corner uh with a compass at the top or something like that i like to try it with the with the little device i think it's a kind of a cool interaction to like you know kind of pull it down and like pull it up you know like um just in front of your uh, f field of view well to the side you know not taking the, the field of view so if you so choose to have that you know you can remove it uh, so yeah um, I'm not sure if anybody else has seen that yet but uh, if you haven't uh, I can uh, I can show it to you if you like okay well uh, this part here 
and it's interesting like it went to scalability low and things are still looking pretty decent i i have to say i mean it's um it's i i, I that's why i like unreal it's pretty easy to to set that up yeah very inspired by Fred. i'm 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 definitely going to uh, i'm not going to deny that <laughs> it's uh like i said it is uh like the environment itself how how things how things look um you know like the trees maybe not so much the location but even the location is kind of close cuz again i like the mon mountainous areas um yeah for sure you know like i said days gone the the environments in days gone and far cry 5 are are my favorite they are definitely my favorite i'm not going to lie all right well let's uh try and finish off this area uh for what remains of the stream and uh, see how it's going to turn out uh, maybe something like that uh, i'm not sure but uh, i think trees uh trees moving a lot uh in run what do you mean Uh, do you mean like how they uh, how they sway in the wind? Oh, wind sway. Um, yeah, I mean, they they somewhat feel like it. Maybe maybe it's more on um, um, on how it looks uh, and during streaming. I mean, on my end, the least it didn't doesn't feel like. I think it's it might. You know, not that I'm looking at it, it feels a little a little brisk. You know, I, I, yeah. That's you know I think that's a little tough. Um, I'd have to look into the shader for that. I'm not entirely sure if that can be that can be addressed. To be honest, I'd have to look into it. But but thank you for uh, thank you for bringing that up. Because I I usually uh, when when people mention something, you know, I try to take a look at it and see. Oh yeah, that kind of that kind of looks. Uh, it definitely it definitely feels like that. Uh, Alanica, will the lighting remain this this bright when the game is finished? Uh, probably not this bright. It it does it does feel a little bright right now, but um, I'm still kind of tweaking the the kind of the values for it. But um, but yeah, I'm still. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, let me finish this little bit here. Um, and uh, we'll see we'll see how to adjust that a little bit more. Yeah, thank you, thank you for bringing that up. That's um, and again, you know, the the reason for streaming is always good to uh, uh, to see how people are are, are looking at it and uh, how it looks on their end. Let's do this little. Area here, there we go. Cool. All right, so um, let's take a look at the sky. Where is my sky blueprint? There we go. Oh, hey, skydive. Oh, sky drive. Sorry. Because uh, it just how it is at the moment, um, you know, probably room for improvement as usual, as always is. Uh, okay, well, so let me see about uh, uh, turning down the brightness. 
And now at Atlantica, let me know if, um, uh, where is my value for the date time? Daylight sky intensity. So right now the the directional light is set to 10. So let's see if it's set to half of that. Oh yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> that might be a little bit better. It was a little bit intense. Yeah, definitely right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that up because, you know, sometimes you get blinded by what you think is like, okay, I'm so used to it. I was so used to seeing it. But yeah, this is, let me actually put it at uh, six. So 60% of what it was. There we go. I think that's good. Yeah, it definitely is. Definitely is. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for mentioning that. And I'm going to need to fix these, uh, these joints in the road. But um, let's uh, let's finish off this little area back here with these houses, you know, add a couple of these, a uh, um, couple of these big, uh, big blocks of, uh, of rock or Let's see how one of these is going to work. Oh yeah, hey, that actually uh fits in for that entire that entire space. Or at least a corner is what I wanted to say. Yeah, exactly. That's uh Cursor, that's, uh, um, you know, and like I said, um, it's a big, a big reason for me to, to stream because um, it's like Atlantica noticed, you know, and everybody else probably, you know, hey, why it, this is looking really bright. And yeah, like I, I got so used to looking at it that I, I stopped noticing it. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, so the cool thing about this big rock is that I can extend a little the terrain out quite a ways around these two little houses here. I don't like that. Um, oh, hey, SkyDrive. Yeah, so, uh, sorry you feel that way. But thank you so much for commenting. That drives off my engagement. <laughs> awesome. Um, oh, yeah, totally. Uh, you... I will, it would, it would happen, you know, that's, uh, that's the matter, you know, kind of the nature of it. And, um, it's, um, but it's a matter of, you know, kind of finding people interested to play test as well. So hopefully I'll, uh, be able to, you know, to present it to you guys and, um, uh, you know, get some, get some people to try it out and play it. That'd be great. Uh, CS2 major Adamski, what is that? Is that um, is that what I'm thinking? Like the Counter Strike? Because <laughs> that that's the only thing that I uh, equate with a CS when it comes to either computer science <laughs> or Counter Strike. Oh, thank you, Cursor. I I really appreciate that. I I hope so too. I mean, that's uh, in the end, that's kind of that's the end goal.
you know so if that if that happens um i, I i'm happy I'm not sure if you guys played the dying light like the first game there's this one mission where uh you got to you got to get uh, uh some magazines or something for this one guy he's a little crazy and he's like mommy's not happy or like <laughs> mama's not going to be happy that's what i was that that's what came through my mind there for a little bit uh if if mama ain't happy uh whatever his name was ain't happy not sure if anybody played uh dying light like the first dying light that's uh that's also like a a game that i really really enjoyed Yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. All right, let's try and push this off to that edge as much as I can. So this one's going to be like the entrance over here to these two houses. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in the end, if, uh, um, if I can get a few people to like it, it's, 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 it's really good. Or at least if I get the people that play it, you know, that's the main goal. You know, if people that play it like it, um, then, you know, that's, that'd be awesome. Uh, no worries. I mean, uh, like I just mentioned, uh, I think any comment um, is um, is driving up engagement. So uh, he's he's free to have his own opinion, of course. You know, I'm also free to ban him, but uh, like I said, you know, just drives engagement. So that's uh, in the end, that's good for the. channel stats if my understanding is correct <laughs> so um oh <laughs> thank you damsky it's um um you know I think in the end it's uh um it's this is always fun to do right but it's not um it's not just this that makes a game right there's like so many so many things that go into it and that's I always I always talk about this that's the one thing that keeps me going I think if I was just doing one thing and one thing only I might have been I might have gotten bored with like you know game development uh as 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 a thing you know so or at least I probably wouldn't be doing it as much you know Yeah, and I think with with um, that's that's what's uh, awesome. You know, that's what I like about game development. There's there's so many disciplines that that go into it, and um, you might get bored of one of them. You can always go and you know do do the other, you know, ten or so uh, things in that that are that are uh, about. game development right and that's that's what i normally that's what i do usually 
Well, I'm going to be curious about if this, the little area that I painted is big enough to get some trees on it. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Oh, thank you, thank you, Atlantica. I'm, you know, I'm, in even that, you know, if if I'm, um, if I'm at least motivating somebody into doing this, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, Cursor, I, I like watching your stream rather than wasting my time on TikTok shorts. And that's a that's an interesting thing you just brought up with uh, with the TikTok shorts. It's uh, so uh, if people are watching the stream and they're hearing me saying TikTok short slash it's TikTok slash shorts. So like short videos on like Instagram. It's not like shorts like pants. <laughs> uh, just to uh, uh, make sure I uh, clarify that for, that for people, <laughs> so they're, they're not thinking it's like we're talking about shorts over here. But but yeah, uh, that's that's good to know. I mean, uh, it's um, I I am not a big fan of uh, of that type of medium. I have to be honest with you. They're they're fun to watch for like, you know, uh, you know, one, two, three, maybe five minutes. But I I can't do it, you know, longer than that. It's uh, um, some of them are funny, yeah, but uh, a lot of them are just Okay, I get it. I've seen five of these. <laughs> oh, 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 really? It's banned in India? I had no idea. Why did they, uh, why did they, because I mean, they're getting close to ban it here in the U.S., but why did they uh, ban it in India? What was, uh, what was the, uh, the reason? Oh, that's why. Uh, Alex, have you worked professionally in Unreal Engine? Uh, this is as professional as as I'm as uh, my Unreal usage is, and um, yeah. It's it's really hard to. Um, I think it's really hard to get a job in the industry, to be honest with you. And if if you if you do manage to get in, it, I think at first you kind of start working as a like a QA person. And I while it's it's great if you're like young and you're just getting started, um, it's it's a little bit more difficult if you like have a mortgage because I think QA jobs don't don't pay too much if I uh, if I'm not mistaken. Unfortunately, so <laughs> oh my God, that is funny, Corsair. Uh, our relations with China is like Unity Corporation relations with its devs. Oh man, sorry about that. Um. Yeah, and and yeah, thank you, Alanika. That's that's how I feel like, especially nowadays, when you see like so many um, so many studios having to scale back, uh, and you know, developers losing their their jobs. It is it is a very fluctuating environment, and everything hinges on one title. And if that one title fails, then you know, in some cases, it could mean like the end of the company. And I think that's why it's. I think to me. It's it's easier. I mean, I get it. Uh, you know, some people do this for a living, so they they need a job in the game industry. But um, uh, 
to me, working as a as an indie person, it's um, um, it's a lot easier because I don't have I'm you know I have my own expectations to meet first. I don't have like some investors that are like breathing down my neck about it or something like that. So it's um, it's easier. And yeah, exactly. So just like Atlantic, I work as a as a Java developer, and I'm lucky enough that it doesn't my day job doesn't take it, you know, take everything out of me, and I can still have the energy to do this, you know. So. Yeah, and definitely true. That's also as well, and Imran, Imran. Uh, yes, uh, Alex, I just saw your message. Yes, I did uh, learn by myself. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, there you go. UX is also a good uh, a, 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 a good uh, job to work in. Yeah, and um, I think at the end of the day, it's a matter of, you know, do what you love and you won't work a day in your life. I think that's how the saying goes. And um, I am, I'm totally agreeing with that. So. Hey, there was a cul-de-sac underneath all this, uh, all this dirt terrain. Let's see if we can like adjust this a little bit around the edges here. Oops, it needs a little more. I think that's better. There we go. Can even go a little higher, maybe five more, so it's not that tight. There we go, that's good. You know, round circles, what was I thinking? raise the prices on that real estate they're they're high enough uh yeah that's funny i mean and this is like the place with the view right you're like all the way up top here so you kind of you can see down below and uh, and see this is one of the reasons that i liked like the the verticality of it uh it's like I don't like things flat, you know, because from here you can see like in the distance, it, it also gives you a little bit of a better sense of like scale. And uh, yeah. Let's also do this area around here. I'll need to lift that house a little bit higher. There we go. I'm just going to try and fix this around the center. There we go. Whoa. That's different. Oh, I think it might be so close that it's uh, like just poking literally like a certain angle is like, looks like it's coming through this. So 
Let me try and do this one, 65. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, the power lines. Uh, well, so the power lines. I'm gonna add the uh, the power lines. Just like uh, yeah, they're not gonna be like this. But uh, and that's a good point because I'm almost done here, and I'll kind of fiddle around with this area uh, a little bit later. But uh, I think that should be good as far as how far below that I'm sculpting. Yeah, there you go. That's good. And we'll um, we'll get some of these power lines going through here, at least uh, on uh, a little bit. Let's take a look. So this guy. Just going to go right there. And it's linked into this one. I'm not entirely sure why it gets linked into this one. But now I should update. Let's see. There we go. And this guy. There. OK. Perfect. Oh, actually, I think it's not rotated properly. Huh, they're linking together. It it's finally happening. The AI is finally happening. Uh, let me clear this. But uh, okay, I think I've done this a little bit. Should have been a little stupider than this, but now it's kind of picking it up on its own. I'll need to make sure that I can deselect that. Uh, Damski, uh, how big is the map? So the map itself, uh, it's like the playable area is going to be this one here, which is about uh, two by two kilometers. So it's not that big. Uh, this entire thing, I think it's about four by four, but it's not going to be playable. So this playable area is just this area here. Yeah, and I'm I'm gonna see if I'm gonna expand on it, you know, kind of make it make it larger. But I think at this point, uh, probably probably not. All right. Well, let's finish off this area uh, here just to kind of end the stream with. So this area is not is looks a little bit better, and um, you know, kind of just getting some trees in there and and such. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Well. Um, and the, the way I was thinking of, uh, the way I envisioned the story itself is uh, kind of episodic, sort of, you know, like, uh, uh, not, not to the extent of you finish the first game and you're completely, if you were to play the second one, you're completely disconnected from the first, you know. Um, or, you know, it's not going to leave the game in like a cliffhanger as to... Uh, you know, it's just going to end and with, with with no conclusion, so to speak, you know, from the story perspective. All right, well, let's finish off some of the sculpting of this terrain out here. Uh, and um, let me see, how can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Oh, nope, that's a little bit lower. All right, that's getting a little bit better. Um, uh, Hisham, can I please get some help after? Oh yeah, yeah of course, of course. Just uh, just ping me after this, and uh, and we can chat. All right, let's just finish this uh, the, this back of back of the uh, back of this house here. Um, <laughs> the time this time with daddy. <laughs> uh, no, not a DLC, but like a part two. So uh, it would it would be like a, you know, uh, continuing the story, so to speak. You know, so that's uh, 
that's how it would be Uh, yeah, and I think at, at, you know for the f first game it would be um, you know kind of you, you finding out basically what was going on over here, and the second the second game continues off of the ending of this basically, right? You know, I have to say, even if somehow um, we get these to be like the sculpting thing to be completely automated, um, you know, I still really enjoy like the mov movements and like everything else that goes into like sculpting terrain and doing all this work manually. So <laughs> uh, I know for like bigger companies, uh, they're probably going to, you know, chat GPT this as much as they can. But uh, for myself, I I really enjoy doing this by hand. Not sure if if others feel like that, but um, kind of that's that's how I feel. Uh, I've used a plugin called Brushify that looks uh, very good f for this use case. So, Imran, I I know of Brushify, but um, maybe I'm not thinking. Uh, what what does it do? Is it uh, is it doing something specific? I know it's got like an auto material to it, but was there anything else like uh, for like the world building? I just can't recall exactly what the uh, what was the other features of it. Oh man, this particular rock is so versatile, I have to say. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's procedure generated. You have full freedom to move things. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm kind of thinking of that PCG tool that uh, un that Unreal has now that you can like move things around and it would just, of course, it's like really nanite centric, but um, yeah, cursor. If only friends gave honest feedback about my game, it would be so much more better. There, like, yeah, it's nice. So, cursor, uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, d did you sh share it uh, with me? 
because I'd like to take a look at it. Uh, I, I just can't recall. My apologies if you already did and uh, and I, I missed it. But I can definitely take a look at it and uh, and and give give you feedback if you'd like. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. So I gotta chat with uh, Hisham for a little bit, but uh, but after that, for sure. All right. So I'm kind of kind of have something going on here with these with these surfaces. I might play around a little bit to kind of make a little bit of a slope going behind the houses, but uh, but for now, I'm okay with that. Let's uh, just paint a little bit more mulch and get some trees happening back here, and I think that uh, uh, that could be good for today. So let's uh, paint a little bit of mulch, and just like around here a little bit. And in between, like, like here, hopefully that will be enough space to generate some trees. You know, back around here. And around here. I was kind of thinking there'd be a little... Oh, that's actually grass. Okay. So let's do, like, mulch out here. And back here. A little bit on this corner. And in between these houses. Okay, that's good. Good. And let's do it back here too. And okay. Well, let's see. Let's see what gets uh, simulated now. Let's save. I haven't saved this entire time and I was like about to freak out that, oh, this is going to crash. Luckily, it didn't. Um, oh, cool, cool, cool. Well, so, uh, Cursor, let's, um, uh, after this, and I'm going to end here uh, shortly, let's do, um, we'll jump on the chat in Discord. And I think over there you can probably share it. And uh, I can also talk to Hisham about uh, what he's trying to do. All right, cool. Uh, actually, that so that that turned out pretty good. We got some trees out here. They're all the way back there. Uh, some got spawned back here. Okay, that's that's pretty good. I'm I'm happy with that result. And we got this area here. We got this area here. I'll I'll kind of finish off these little. Uh, garages down here on this slope. I might adjust the slope a little bit because it's it seems a little too abrupt at the moment. So I might uh, I might finesse it a little bit. It's kind of it's got this hump here, so maybe I'll just try and make it a little straighter. But um, but yeah, it's uh, I think it was a really productive uh, really productive uh, stream. So uh, guys, thank you thank you everybody so much for stopping by. You know, taking some time out of your Sunday. Uh, hopefully even working on something in the background and um, yeah so I will uh, see you guys next week and uh, hopefully have a have a great week guys uh, uh, make the best of it I guess and uh, I'll see you then all right take care everybody bye